OBS, which is the software I usually use to record my screen, honestly didn't want me to record this video. Hello, so in this video I'm not going to introduce myself or anything, um, because this is more of a more sensitive topic for me specifically as it relates to me because uh, if you didn't know my family came from Puerto Rico to um, New York and I was born and raised here so because of this um, it hits home especially and we'll figure out later what I mean by this but today we're going to be talking about the movie Force of Nature um, the reason why I'm talking about this now even though this movie has been released since June 30th 2020 it's because I have been aware of it now um, a lot of things have been happening a lot of petitions and everything have been happening because of uh, things relating to the minority community and it's just in people of color in general so uh, it's getting a little annoying and also um i saw this on twitter a friend of mine who's also Peruvian, um posted this on her twitter feed i didn't know anything about it and then once i researched it more i kind of got a little upset and wanted to talk about it a little bit more i don't know if people talked about this before i didn't uh read anything about it so um we're going to be talking about it in this video and this video is going to be this video is going to be more of an informative video. Um, I'm also going to be not sober for this video because um, this hits a little close to home and I definitely will be screaming at one point in this video. So we're going to be reading upon articles about this. We're going to read the premise understand what the whole movie is about and why it can be problematic then we're going to uh see the rotten tomatoes score of the movie see what people t are saying about it and then go ahead and watch the trailer we're not watching the movie i don't know if it came out yet or whatever well it says it was released in um i think june 30th but um i don't really want to uh watch it the trailer is enough for me to be honest um, I don't know if I'm going to be watching it sober, we'll see. This barely has anything in it, so I don't know what to tell you. If you want to watch a particular part of this video, right after this I will put a table of content. I'm going to read the uh, summary first. Um, so, Mel Gibson is, I think, the male, the main character, and his name is Ray Bennett. Ray is forced to evacuate because there's currently going to be a Category 5 hurricane but he does not want to and he's facing a gang of thieves plan to steal around about uh 55 billion dollars in the vast of a hurricane the gang of thieves are the bad islanders the bad puerto ricans in the middle of this and of course mel gibson is supposed to be the main character who's saving the day the white man who saves the day because white people are the heroes right right now the biggest problem of this is because of the fact that this is based in a situation of a hurricane a category 5 hurricane and if you didn't know in 2017 there was a hurricane called maria who destroyed puerto rico as a whole and it hurts because this hits close to home so i feel like i could speak upon it i'm not going to speak upon because of the people who experienced it but i speak upon it as it's part of my community anyways so we're going to first read the rolling stone review well the article by rolling stone so it says force of nature review mel gibson thriller is one toxic shock so we're going to it also says that there's offensive stereotypes, which... Oh yeah, we're doing a drinking game, too. Guess what it is. Um... So, it says, given... I'm closing my window. So the whole thing is basically at the fact that, um, 
this is like a general movie, like a general chemical theater where the main character is the heroine and everyone in the island or everything are the bad guys. This is a usual trope that uh, Hollywood paints in every single movie. And the problem is, is where it's based and all the uh, stereotypes they're still placing onto Hispanic people. Now, also, another thing, this is in 2020. This is released in 2020. I don't know who told them that this would work in 2020, but it doesn't. Because 2020 is not the place for all this. People are tired of all the stereotypes being placed, there's a lot of movement, and now you put this, especially after it being like three years? after a category 5 hurricane and you're doing something like this okay that's just my opinion but it also says that the what is now routine is the twitter storm of controversy ignited by the casting of mel gibson and this other actor i'm not going to name him both after both actors with assault charges on their records as white cops battling Puerto Rican villains against the Hurricane Maria. It doesn't say Hurricane Maria, but the most recent Category 5 hurricane there is in Puerto Rico is Hurricane Maria. So we can just think it's that. I mean, Hollywood, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. Okay, so of course we're already these are cops right so we know what's going on with cops white cops specifically we know what's going on and how everything's going down here in the history it, it's like right now so much things are going on and the fact that hollywood decides to still bring this out i don't know how but literally let's think about this it's hollywood This isn't like an indie brand uh, uh, independent film coming out. This has known actors and also it has a big budget. I'm going to see the budget that they had for this movie. Oh my god. So the budget was... 23 million dollars with about 15 million being spent on the they gave them 32 million dollars to make this movie and guess how much they got from box office they got 149,000 and 350 so they lost a lot of money making this and also remember this is being released in the middle of a pandemic but putting that aside this shows how much dirt they've received for creating a movie like this I would have thought um, Hollywood would have learned from I don't know Black Lives Matter. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and look at Rotten Tomatoes. And it says... Uh, it's a 9... <laughs> average? Um... 9% average. Um... If you don't know how Rotten Tomatoes works, is um, you vote how good it is, right? And if it's a hundred, it means it's a regular tomato. And if it barely gets votes of any good votes, any good reviews, it's a rotten tomato. That's basically it. So this is definitely a rotten tomato as it's. Um, nine percent. Um, yeah, a lot of people voted a rotten instead of a good, like, tomato. So, 
Jeez, this is... Also, noting it only has uh, 34 critiques, but still, it's, it's bad. Also, who can watch an hour and 34 minutes of this? I could never. Anyways, um, it says, it's no more consciously racist than the 100 action thrillers from the 80s. It's meant, I think, to be a throwback to those films and to an era where Mel Gibson was still on the top, but it lacks the snap and pizzazz to close the deal. Also, by the way, we're in the world where we're in 2020, where a lot of these jabs to racist, racism and stereotypes, it doesn't work anymore. Films from the 80s are good in the 80s because that was the time where a lot of people were openly racist. But that doesn't mean it's still good. You know, no one liked it that. But now a lot of people more have the voice to say it. And a lot of people, especially white people, are helping provide the voice and making the voice of black and people of color voices heard. That's also the problem, but we're not going to talk about that. But our voices are being heard because other people are amplifying it. And the fact that this isn't going through with people says how ha times have changed. Don't be racist. It's not that hard. But it's hard. Any okay, let me stop. Okay. Um, the material exploits... The material exploitation of a fictional Puerto Rican hurricane for cheap contra white savior thrills push it into the realm of ugliness thank you boo you deserve a clap because you're using something that is very sensitive to Puerto Ricans to create this white uh, heroine hero, hero picture when in reality it's just tasteless honey where's the flavor anyways That being said, let's go to Twitter. <laughs> Again, a fucking again. 
Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Same old fucking shit. I feel like I disassociated a bit in that thing. It just feels very cheap and like a repeat of every single other movie there's been made that's been action felt. It doesn't feel like it's anything new at this point. It just feels like they're trying too hard to just pull out a movie out, an action film movie. And I feel like this movie would have probably done something at its prime, but with how where the focus of the movie is, it's just, it's focusing on, you know, thieves who are the Puricans and the white dude who's the savior. Like, that doesn't work anymore. Um, and the fact that it's in the middle of a hurricane just doesn't help it. It's just, like, it's just asking for too much too soon. And no matter how long it's been, it will never be an easy thing to live with at this point. Putting away aside the stereotypes, how harmful it is for Puricans, how, like, insensitive it is to the whole situation it's just uh it's it's bland it's tasteless this movie could have easily been focusing on how horrible the hurricane was the experience of the hurricane and how it affected Puerto Rico and how uh like the challenges of being in the hurricane, trying to escape the hurricane, trying to evacuate on time, just that could have made it a lot better and been executed a lot better and would actually got gain a lot of views, especially right now during the pandemic. It feels cheap and just like something that was done to gain attraction and money. And it, it literally didn't gain back anything of what the budget was it literally they spent so much money making this that like you wasted so much money on something that you could have done way better and the fact that it's a white cast and no one that's actually like from here uh from the specific area that they're recording in makes it even worse i mean you could have changed the cast you could have put like Puricans, Hispanics as well. You could have done much more. And this is the problem with Hollywood. That they keep on bringing out movies like this. Expecting people to like it. And then receive the criticism. Like this. Like Lionsgate. You could have done better. You could have done something way better. And it's just. It's noticeable that. They don't have people of color telling them the criticism or if they do they don't listen to it it shows how whitewashed the system is and how whitewashed um hollywood is and how outdated this is being this is not worth they lost money doing this and i'm not mad at that um but yeah so this was the video for today. I, I didn't expect anything much more or anything less of it. Um, this was 25 minutes of recording. Let's hope it can be shortened. But yeah, um, see ya. Ciao. <laughs>